<clears throat> so you can sketch on planes, the three major planes. You can also sketch on flat faces of the park. Can you sketch on a curved face? No. You can't draw on a piece of paper that's bent, right? You got a piece of paper like this. You couldn't draw flat on that, right? So sketches always have to be on flat planes. <clears throat> and we'll talk more in a couple of weeks about how you can make new planes. That, and move them wherever you want them to be, not necessarily on a face or the, the three <clears throat> primary ones. <clears throat> What's the file format for a project? IPT. Oh, for a oh, project. That's what? IPJ. What about for an assembly? IAM. IAM. Oh, part. IPT. There's the IPT. What about drawing? IPT. And the presentation? IPN. IPN. All right. So we got our file types. We know we need to start a project. We start a part. We make sketches. So we're on the we're on a good. On a roll. So today we're going to talk more about doing sketched features. So once you have that base thing done and you want to do, add other things, so kind of like we did last week a little bit, right? We had our, we drew our base and then we cut out some some rectangles or a slot or whatever. Uh, this week we'll talk about more options besides just extrude. Uh, we'll go back over some of the the distances um, and we'll talk about revolve. Okay. Any questions? So what's revolve? Does anyone know? If you want to make it circular. Yeah, if you want to make it circular, right? So, like that. You draw basically half of it and you spin it around. Just like a potter or something like that. <clears throat> this one, again, start with something simple and you add to it. Alright. So, we all know extrude, right? We did it last week. You just start with what you start out with and you're gonna pull it straight up, right? Any questions on that? Are there any other options on extrude? Did you guys look at the other options? What are some of the other options? Okay, you can toss it go down. Halfway. Not Yeah, you can do mid plane where it goes half up and half down. What else? All the way through. Yeah, once you get to the second thing, you can change the distances. But what else? Were there any other options on that? I think between or two. We get started. So once I get started up, there's an a, there's an other tab. There's the main tab, and then there's another little other tab. You can add a taper to it. So what's a taper? Where it narrows, it narrows down. down. Yeah, it, it gets smaller or bigger from, from your sketch. So like this part, I did this little L shape, and I extruded and add some taper, so it got smaller as it went up to the top. sketch this, or draw this part. How many sketches is that going to be? Two, right? A rectangle and then a line. So go ahead and draw that part real quick. You want to make a project mm -hmm. Yeah, every day when you come in you should set up like a sample project and have it in or open ready to go. You could, but then what happens if you decide you don't want that? Okay. Or you want that only to go halfway? Right? So that's why I like to break things up into a lot of little things, just thinking about how it might change in the future.
you could just make one project that's called like demo, then you always save that project and reuse it every week. That's a good question. How, which plane should you put, put this on? Depends on what you want your sketch to be, right? If you want to draw, uh, that is your sketch. You do it on the, the XZ, right? If you want to draw, that is your sketch, you do it over there. So on this one, it really doesn't matter which plane you pick. But I would recommend picking something so that when you're in the isometric view, it has the same proportion. So it's one by two by three. So how do you get to an isometric view? Right now I'm looking straight at it. How do I get to an isometric view? The normal isometric view. How do I do that? Yeah, I can come over here and pick the corner, right? Or hit the home button. Or F6. I usually just like doing that. Since I open a, a drawing or a new part, I hit F6. So that way I'm in an isometric and I can see my three planes down here. And I can work with it. <coughs> Now I can see where they are. Hey, I'll put there. So now that I have that part, now I can start drawing that, kind of keep it lined up, right? They all got to be constrained before you, it's got to be a... Before you do extrude, you need to have them all constrained. start the line. Should I start my line right here? Wait. Show you mine. Ah. Should I start my line right there? Why not? Because it'll keep it connected to that. See, I've got a green dot. That means that the point's going to be fixed to the midpoint of that line. So I won't be able to change that dimension to one and a half. So if you just want to be on the line somewhere, make sure that you have the yellow circle, not a green circle. So the yellow circle means it's on the line, it's coincident with the line. Green circle means it's coincident with a, with a center point or with an end point. So I'll start it over here somewhere and go down here somewhere. Back to dimension. From that point to the line. And I usually like mentioning 
from a line to a line. But in this case, I can't go from one line to another line or just the line itself. So I had to go from a line to a point. I never dimension from a point to a point. Okay. Do you remember why? What the benefit of going from a line to a point was? What? Um, yeah, and watch what happens when I do this one. So if I go from a line to a point, look what happens. When you go from a line to a point, your dimension is going to stay parallel with that line. If I went from a point to a point, it's just going to find the shortest distance between those two points or let you do a horizontal or vertical. So I always like to do from a line to a point so that way I know that it's, it's locking in right. line here and turn it to construction line. Now it's not going to use that edge to make the profile. So now this one's going to be open and so I'm not going to take that. You want to make, you want to turn that to a construction line. Um, use an inventor, if you delete that line it'll be gone for then. But then when you reopen the sketch sometimes it'll make that projected edge come back and it'll be black. It'll be using it as a profile again. So I, instead of deleting it, turn it to a construction line. Um, <clears throat> now what? Yeah, so I tell it, cut it. Should I just leave the distance at one? I've got a few options here, right? I mean, so I can say to next. Would that work on this part? Yeah, I can tell it to cut to next because that's the next thing. So that would work. Oh, so I can say to next. I can say two. And then I can pick that. You can see when I use two, I can actually pick through the part. Because it's picking, it knows that it has to hit something else past that. So I can sit through that. Or I can say all. So for this one, I can kind of do whichever one, except for distance. So I'm just going to say all. OK. And there we go. Pretty easy part. Any questions on that? How'd you do yeah. the one, the one, to get that, to get that edge? This one. This. The bottom, the bottom edge. The one, one point zero from the bottom. This. From the bottom to the t to the top. Yeah. Oh, this. I missed that whole part. I just mentioned it. Or from the bottom edge to the point. And then just do a line. Yeah, I just I drew a line first. Remember, geometry comes first. So I drew a line in there. And then I added that dimension, and I added that dimension. Oh, that's right, that's right, okay. That's right. Any other questions? All right. Oh, now that we're there, let me show you that up, where you can do that draft. So if I go to the, to the extrusion, see that more tag right there, the more tab? That's where you can go in and add the taper. So I could give it like five, five. The positive taper makes it go out. You get bigger as it goes up. <coughs> Negative five makes it go in. Why wouldn't I have, I have used a taper to do that slant? Because it doesn't have the degree of it. And the five is just degrees? Yeah. Yeah, just one, this, look at, look at that, look at that. Taper goes all sides at, an, at the same angle. But here I only wanted part of this side 
and I didn't have an angle for it. So I could have found the angle, right? But it's not what I wanted, so I wouldn't use it. And I've very rarely used taper. So negative five is negative five degrees? Yep. All so negative degrees. means come in, and then five is for the five degrees. From the, from the existing profile. Yeah. Any questions? round parts, right? So you have, when you do revolve, you have the profile, you have the profile that you're going to revolve around, and then you also have an axis. So you have the axis here. And so the, where the axis is compared to where the profile is is important. Why do you think that? Axis is the beginning of the drawing. Yeah, where do you think the axis was here? Center point. Down the center. Right? Axis is down the center of it. So there was actually a space between the axis and the profile. So that made it a, a hole in the middle. If your axis is the side of your profile, what's going to happen? It's going to be solid. Like here, the axis is down the middle, so we're going to have a hole in it. <clears throat> so, where should we start the sketch? Where should the origin be? The origin is there, because now you've got it centered on the, centered on the origin. So I'd probably start this, this line here. And I would draw that as a center line, right? Because I have the options of a construction line or a center line, or a construction and center line. It can be both at the same time. But what does making that a center line do? Rotates around it. Not necessarily. Because I can do center lines on flat parts uh, in the sketch. What does what making a sketched line a center line do? Remember? No? No, that's a construction line. What does making it a center line do? I'll give you a hint. The answer's on the board. No? Yeah, it just mentions a cross set so you can see the, the full distance from one side to the other side. So by picking this center line and that line, it actually asks me for the dimension all the way across. So go ahead and get started on this one. No. You can just start a new part. If you want to save it, you can, or you just delete. Delete the extrusion on that other one and then get do this one. Up to you. windows on the screen like how do we oh. pick on the feature tree. Okay. If you want to delete it, you have to go to the feature tree to delete the part, to delete the features.
there I've started it, right? Got my center line, got my profile, and this thing moves all over the place. So what should I do to it? I need to constrain it first, right? It's not moving like I want to. I want this bottom to be lined up at the bottom with the, with the origin there. So how can I do that? How can I make this line line up at that point? Which of the constraints will do that? No? Because it can't be perpendicular to a point. No, it can't be parallel to a point. No, collinear is only two lines. I said it earlier. Remember when I was moving around over the line, the, the yellow dot and the green dot? I said it. Coincident. So coincident, uh, two points can be coincident, that means they'll be in the same exact spot. Or a point can be coincident to a line, that means it has to stay on that line. Doesn't matter, they don't have, doesn't actually have to physically be on it, but it just has to be lined up with that line. So that's what we want. And that's one that I use a lot. I could also use horizontal, right? You could say that point and that point to be horizontal. That'll work. So either way, I'm going to be coincident that point to that line. Now when I move it, it's staying lined up and it's kind of moving like I want it to now. So now I can start adding some dimensions. Center line to there, that's going to be one. Half, one and a half. One. It says one dimension needed, right? It's not fully constrained. What's it missing? My whole, everything's blue. What, what dimension or constraint is missing? missing one. No? Okay, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Because from here I can extrude or revolve or whatever I want. Yeah, this line right here, my center line, it doesn't have a length on it. Do I really need to constrain that? No. So that's your one exception to having it fully constrained. So if you have a, a line as an axis, that you're going to revolve around or using for construction to make things symmetric or whatever, that line doesn't have to be symmetric. All right, it doesn't have to be fully constrained. So it can have the length floating. But your all your part should be the blue color. Okay? Is everyone to this point or further? You want to be extruded to the no, I don't want it extruded. I want it revolved 180 degrees. So if you already revolved at 360, go back and edit it to be only 180.
you sketch on this plane, see? But you need that. You should have a center line and then your profile over here. We're not doing a rectangle, right? Oh, now you just delete your point. So just, let's finish. Let's delete that sketch. Okay. Oh, delete. And then just do it in this sketch. So you want to pick that one? Go ahead and pick that, see? So that way you're on the same sketch. So now you're going the right. Draw a line, and then draw a little L shape. To get this a diameter. Oh, that's because you didn't. You actually drew a line that's one there. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't need to do that. If you just do your dimension now, it takes this line and that line. That's why we made that a center. Line. So you can just. So. Okay. So okay. So now I can just. Put that hit it change that to one. Yep. So why did I get? Why did that give me a diameter? What? It, now because it's giving you across the center because you went you do it to that and oh, then go up to be that. Okay, okay, okay. So now you use that as a revolve. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Uh, you don't have it. Uh, that one and then lock it.
erase this. I revolve it. Instead of doing full, I'm going to change it to angle until it be 180. <laughs> so now I get that. And there's my, my part. Okay. Questions on that? And I'll post this drawing, <coughs> the, the lecture notes online. <coughs> so if you want to come back to it, you can come back to it again. Don't use just that first sketch we did, right? Usually parts are a little bit more complex than that first thing. So we have to add that other ones. Um, so we have our booleans. We can union and subtract, which we've done today. Or we've done, usually we've done subtract, right? We haven't done union yet. But union just means we're just adding whatever our new sketch is onto the part. What was intersect? Yeah, what's left that's common between the two things. We've already talked about this today. <coughs> so, if I was going to edit this part, and I, if I did that, let me show you guys. Start with that, and I want to do a cut on there. I sketched here, and I extrude it back. If I say all the way, it's going to go all the way through it. From there, I can sketch <coughs> down and just say to next. So it's going to go from here down to the next thing it hits. Then I get that. So now, if I change the, the first part. If I change the, the, the second sketch, and I only, only go down that far, I don't go down that far, now it's still cutting through. If I had been here, and I had told this sketch to only go through that distance, and that only go down a certain distance, then it might not have changed like that like I wanted it to. <clears throat> so you always have to think about how it's going to change, and try and use those other ones besides just distance. <clears throat> when would you use just a distance? So the first thing you always have to use a distance, or a, a between planes that you've already established. Part that maybe can't, can't be. What was that? Part that has to be a certain distance. Yeah, if you have a slot that you want to be half an inch deep, extrude it half an inch. Don't say it to the next. Just tell it, I want to go this distance. So if you have something that you want to be a certain size, yeah, put a distance in there. But if you want it to go all the way through, then use one of those other ones. Or if you want it to go to the next thing. Um, what about extrudes? Should you use distances on extrude when you're doing a union to it? Probably. Most of the time when you extrude, like on this one, yeah, I went to the next thing. But usually when you're adding stuff to it, You'll put a distance on it unless you're going to the next thing. <clears throat> you should not extrude all the way through something. So when you go when you go to next, you gotta pick that profile first, hit next, and then it goes to that or it automatically goes to the yeah, you say like you go to the face you wanna to go to Yeah, next. if you said so like here. There. <clears throat> if I say two next, it's going to go down until it hits the next thing, no matter what that next thing is. You have to pick it. Yeah. If you do to a to a plane, so if I did as I said two, then I'd have to pick whatever it was. But when you say to next, you don't have to pick anything. So I'm actually going to go through until it hits something else.
Any other questions? So after, after you can click two next, no matter if you change the bottom part, it automatically. Yeah. Works. Yeah. So if I did this one and I said two next and then cut it to that next thing, I can go back to this one. change that to be <coughs> five. It's still going to cut all the way through. It doesn't care that I just changed the distance because it's going from here to the next plane that it hits. Okay, questions? Now let's this one. How am I going to break this one up? I can make a cube and then cut out that, yeah. cut that off. I could also make this full L and then cut that off. It's kind of, you, do you think it's always going to stay kind of an L shape? Yeah. Probably. So then it would be okay to, to do the L. But that's getting to our maximum lines almost. Uh, <clears throat> but then you come back and just add that, that cut onto it. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> there you Remember, relate this back to your origin. So in this part, where do you think the origin would be? Yeah. I'd probably stick my origin right there. And then just put that corner on it when I draw my L. That way I can just extrude straight back. I don't have to, this part isn't symmetric at all. So there's no reason I'm trying to make it symmetric. No, no reason to try and line the, the origin up in the middle. right off of it when you started it.
It's kind of like that, right? That's here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reuse this this part. I didn't save it yet, so I'm gonna delete that. Look what happens when I delete a feature. What is it asking me? Do I want to delete the sketches that were used to make that? I want to reuse that sketch. So I'm gonna say no. Take that checkbox off. Say okay. Just gonna go edit that. Delete that line. I'm going to make that line horizontal. Bring that over there. to go from that two inch. Guestimate. Guestimate. So watch this. I'm just going to pick on that edge down there. That's on the bottom, right? I'm just going to pick there. And I'm going to pick there. And there you go. Now if I look at the bottom of it, I'll see it automatically projected that edge for me. Why didn't I just delete... Why didn't I just dimension it from this line? What? Which one? Why didn't I just dimension it from this edge here instead of going all the way to the bottom? Yeah, because the drawing had it going from the bottom, so I should probably use that same one. And I probably messed up on the other on sketch one too, right? But I didn't do that. I did that, so I'll delete that. Mention it there. Didn't change anything, but why did I just do that? Do that? Yeah, just to keep it keep it consistent. Because remember, our dimensions are how they're going to check the part once it's made. <clears throat> so if we're going off of a print, that that means that dimension is important for something. So I'm going to use that same one again. I'll extrude that, cut, all the way through.
If you go close to the midpoint, then you why not? You have all the space up here. Why not click up here? Why? Why get it close to where it might go to the midpoint? Yeah. Do I make a line going across? That's all you need. Because when you extrude it, it's going to cut that. I was just wondering. You just need to add your dimensions.
we're going to make custom fields. And all these fields here can actually go right into our drawing. So you, you label your part here with, with a title and a description and the designer. And all of that goes right into the drawing for the drawn by, for the title of the drawing, for the part number, for the description on the bill materials. And so you don't have to re-enter it later on. You do it here while you're designing it. When you make the drawing, it goes right in. You don't have to retype anything. <clears throat> the last one is physical. So this is where you can see what it is. So I'm going to pick material. I'm going to say that this is I'm just going to say steel. And so it pulls a, a standard density. And you can go in and um, update this in the, in the um, back over here in manage. You can add and edit these. But it's giving us a, the standard density. Now we can get, we can see the mass of this part, um, the volume, the center of gravity, uh, the inertial properties. So a lot of stuff you have to spend a lot of time calculating in physics, right? It gives it to you here. Um, and you can do this when you, when you do assemblies also. You can use this to find the center of gravity for the whole assembly. And if you take like the SOLIDWORKS exam, and I think probably also on when you take the certification for inventor, they, they don't go through and actually look at your part that you draw. What they do is they ask you for the center of mass. Because if your part's correct, they can check it easily by seeing where the center of mass is. If, if you ask something that's off, the center of mass is going to be off. They can tell that just by looking at the number. Uh, so if you do any of those exams, you'll, they just ask you, where's the center of mass? Or what is the uh, part? They ask you just, what's the mass? On an assembly, where's the center of mass? So then you know, okay, it's here. And then they know, okay, yeah, he, he got it right. It's all constrained correctly. You can also go see the center of gravity of the thing. Any questions on that? <clears throat> so it might be good to, when you start doing your labs especially, going into the eye properties <coughs> and labeling some stuff. So labeling the author. Yeah, it's the author that goes to the, to the, to the drawing. The title, the description, and the part number. Get used to labeling those few things. So we will use that when we do drawings later on. Um, but you can also look at what else is here. Any questions? All right. Um, so this week we have a few parts for the practice. We've got that part. If you look at this one, right there, what do you notice? Where my mouse is. What do you notice right here? Like a notch. What? It's like a notch. Besides the crack right there. That's tapered. What? It's tapered. No. It goes straight and then it angles. So that's a different angle. It's not 90 there. You have to figure out what that angle is. Oh. oh. Just a little angle. It doesn't matter what angle you put it at. Zero, 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 one. And so over here, it's got angle gauges. So you can line this 
bottom of the floor. With the two different things. Find one up to the bottom here, find one up to the bottom there. And you can see what angle it is. So all the tool cabinets is gonna be unlocked, you can see to measure it. Um, I think I said to use calibers, but you can use whatever you want with it. Um, measure it. But I said tape measure, but you can use tape measure or calipers. Um, when you measure them with a tape measure, do it to the nearest, like 30, 30 second of an inch, right? So the tape measures. line is a sixteenth, right? And so if it's if the way you're measuring is halfway in there, you could probably guesstimate the thirty second, but at least get it to the nearest sixteenth. Try and get it to the nearest thirty second of an inch when you're using the tape measure. Um, you want to know how to read calipers? reading right there. So that's still a lot larger than the, the air that you have on the calipers. So 
get get a try and try and guess between the 16s on the tape measure. 